share this side and today i'll tell you how to handle the conflicts so conflicts generally can come when there are more than two similar requests either come parallelly or sequentially so to understand the conflicts better we first have to understand the idempotency what is idempotency so here if you see that generally your post is not considered it's not an idempotent and your get and delete is generally considered as idempotent and your patch is yes maybe or maybe not so how we say that it's a idempotent or not what exactly is idempotent so when we say idempotent means when multiple same request we are triggering so the behavior should not change so for example in the get call even if you call multiple similar calls your behavior the how your uh, data behaves will not change so if you have here user 1 and its details so no matter how many similar calls you will do whether parallel whether sequential doesn't matter this the behavior of this data the state of this data is not changing but post is not idempotent so now let's say that the first request comes it created a row user 1 so this is a new row created but if similar request comes it might create another row right so now here if you see that this is not an idempotent now you have two two data which might not be an expectation okay and similarly patch call might be an idempotent might not be but the way how you design for example uh let's say your patch call is updating a name it is my name sj now the first time patch request comes it try to update with like dj so it updated dj now let's say in parallel or in sequential another duplicate calls comes dj update the name to dj does it have any impact no no impact right already name is dj it will also try to update it to dj nothing no impact so in that case it is idempotent but there are certain cases where it do not considered as an idempotent and it need to be handled properly now let's say that you have a row where you have certain like a number and with every patch call you are increasing the number by 1 let's say earlier it is 1 and the first request come you increment it to 2 another patch call comes and you are incrementing the number by 3 so now here if you see even the similar request comes multiple times either parallelly concurrently or sequentially it is not idempotent right the value get change state is getting change so there are two scenarios where your client is sending the idempotency key or they are not sending idempotency key so when the client send an idempotency key in this scenario what generally client does is so whenever the client calls an operation particular operation let's say this api slash user it also send a unique idempotency key right every time and when server gets it what it does it maybe in db or cache generally it's a cache it creates an entry so let's say this is my cache it creates an entry that hey okay this is the idempotency key 1 and as soon as server is started working on this api for this uh, this call request 1 so it will say that okay it is created or in progress something now let's say that while server is working on this request 1 and suddenly client makes another call slash api slash user with the same idempotency key 1 or might be maybe because of network problem two times call happen to the server for the same api say exactly same request but multiple request happens now server what will do is it will check first hey is there any key already present is there any already key present it will say yes 
Now if key is present and the status is created means the first request itself is in progress. So means this request cannot be entertained because the, there is already one more request which is in progress which has the same advertency key. So it will return conflict with 409. Right? So now this request has been rejected. Now when the previous request completes its task, what it will change? It will change it to consumed. Status change to consume. Now once the status of a particular advertency is changed to consume, no more requests can send advertency key one. It will like not be entertained at all because this is consume. Okay. So there are scenarios, different scenarios. What if it is created and there is a failure in that, that scenarios, whenever any failure happen in previous request, they have to remove this key. But somehow let's say that there is some problem and the key has not been removed. Let's say idopotency key one, it is created, but it's never changed to consume. And there is a failure, some failure in this request. What would happen? Uh, like any further request will not be entertained any retry because it isn't created it will always say conflict so generally when we are using cache we also put ttl so we will put a ttl of let's say one minute after that one minute it will automatically get pushed anyway idopotency is just to handle the like any similar request coming in parallel right so generally it's not required to store in a db generally cache is sufficient with a proper TTL. Okay. So this is when the client sent an idopotency key, how we handle a conflict. Now there are some scenarios where clients do not set an idopotency key. In that case, we have to handle in a two way. The first and both is used. So now first what happened is let's say request come request one comes. We have, so this is our server logic in the server logic. The client is not even sending an idopotency. They are just invoking an API. So what server will do? It will do idopotency check. Now in the idopotency check, what it will do is it will check the DB. Let's say it want uh, some request. Some request has a payload. So in the idopotency check, it will check that, hey, similar request is already some data is present in my DB. Let's say I want to create a user with user. Let's say this is the user is in this country, this name, this email ID, like SJ at the rate, something, 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 this mobile number, something, something, something. So is this already some user present with this detail? If yes, if it found a record, what it will do, it will not even entertain this. Okay. So first time when request one is coming, definitely it will not find and it will create a DB. It will create this row. Now, anytime this request two is coming, it will go through this idopotency check. Now it will check the DB hey, user, this email ID SJ at the red something, this mobile number eight one something, something, something. Is there any already user present? If yes, what it will say that, Hey, this is an idopotency request it will return 200. Yeah, okay, because no row created. So this is during post API, no row created. And it will just send the details of this user, which is already there. But you can ask here, right? Hey, what happened if this request one and request two comes concurrently? Itself? But what if this two requests comes concurrently? How do we, how do we save this? Both should not create two rows. So in this case, lockings comes into the picture. So what generally happen is we also put a lock. Let's say that in the cache itself, let's say with TTL, I would say one minute, let's say. So now in this case, on some unique, let's say email ID, let's say SJ at the rate something, I put a key. Okay. And I have put, let's say it's currently locked. So even though two requests comes in parallel, since I am putting a lock, only one would get it, another would fail, right? Or let's say there is some very, very minor, let's say one request is already in progress. It put a log and is still working. It is still working. 
and the data is not persisted into the db yet but it's working and the second request comes in now it will try to put a log and it say that hey it's already locked means somebody is working on it then it will just simply reject the second request says that 409 conflict i hope this might be helpful